Uh, it's Dr. Kevin, uh, Wellness Wednesday. Dr. Kevin's here with the Bryant Wellness Institutes of Acadiana. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are y'all this oh, morning? Oh, you know Lovely. what? You, I was gonna, I was gonna tell you, you, that blue, you should wear that tomorrow for the Healing House deal. Uh, Children's Grief Awareness Day. Tomorrow. Oh. So wear that again tomorrow. <laughs> I have another one. I'll, 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 I'll put this one in the dry cleaner. Wear something of yeah. that color tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody wear All blue. Right. All right, no so what's problem. going on, Doc? Oh, a little frost on the ground this morning. Mm-hmm. Kind of nice, kind of nice. Mm-hmm. So, no, it's not windy, thank goodness. Yeah, makes a big difference. Yep. So, Well, today, um, you know, I, I wanted to talk about something on the show that, that I've spoken about many times, but it, there, there's been a new article come out about the harmful effects of chemicals in our homes and our surroundings and how they affect our health. So today I wanted to give you some tips and some ways to reduce your chemical exposure, some simple little things that you can do around your home to limit the chemical exposure that you have. But there's some world-renowned researchers that have released a new article, and I wanted to discuss that. And and, and these are, are world-renowned researchers. One of them is uh, Dr. Philip Grandjean of Harvard School of Medicine. A little bit of a, an important school, mm-hmm. uh, uh, place. And then uh, Dr. Landrigan of Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. So these are world-renowned guys. And they have reviewed hundreds of studies and released an opinion. And they have really sounded the alarm on how destructive the chemicals that we're exposed to every day are for our health. And, I mean, they could have just called me. I've been talking about this yeah. for years. Um, but these world-renowned researchers are some of the most prestigious doctors in the country, and I'm really glad that they're taking this on. And And they agree with me that the chemicals in our surroundings are making people sick, and we don't even realize it. People aren't even talking about this. Mm-hmm. And humans are using more chemicals than ever before in the history of mankind. And these chemicals are not even really required to be studied before they're put out. So what I mean by that is I don't have to prove that a chemical that I want to use is safe before I use it. It almost is the burden of proof is on somebody else to prove that it's not. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's just say I'm making a widget and I need a chemical to add to this widget to make whatever I'm trying to get it to do work. Mm -hmm. I can use whatever chemical pretty much I want unless it's directly banned, which not very many are, and I don't really have to prove that it's safe to put in there. I can just use whatever chemical that I need, and so we are literally surrounded. There are literally thousands of environmental chemicals used in our homes, in our food, in our agriculture, in our clothing, in our water. And these chemicals are damaging us. They're making us sick, and they're making our children sick. And these two doctors that I mentioned earlier from Harvard and Mount Sinai are calling for a global prevention strategy to try to reduce these chemical exposures. And, you know, I couldn't agree with that more, but the problem is that's not going to happen. There's too much money in these chemicals. You know, these are some of the largest corporations in the world. They have too many politicians in their pocket to ever get these things, you know, at least in our lifetime. It's just not going to happen. So what that means is there's just too much. They don't they donate too much money to the politicians to ever get movement on this, to ever get anything done about it. And so it's up to each one of us to do this on our own. You know, it's up to each one of our listeners to really make this something that they pay attention to and do what they can to try to reduce their own chemical exposure. Um, And sometimes it doesn't really hit home when I say that people are ingesting these chemicals at an alarming rate. They just don't, they just sort of glass over. They don't really get it. So let me give you an example. When you say ingesting, you don't necessarily mean orally, do you? No, taken into your body, soaked through your skin. Smell. you breathing. Yeah. yeah, However is ingested in your body. But let me give you an example of what I mean. Okay. So you woke up this morning and you got up from your mattress that's probably been coated with a fly, with a fire retardant chemical <laughs> mm-hmm. that has been the major cause of of hormone disruption and mental problems been proven to do that. You step onto your carpet that's coated with a stain repellent chemical that's proven to cause diabetes and obesity. Uh, you get a drink of water that probably contains arsenic, fluoride, chlorine, and many other unknown chemicals and heavy metals. 
Uh, you have coffee that probably contains pesticides, and if it comes in contact with plastic, probably contains uh, BPA. You take a shower when the water is probably absorbed into your skin, and then you use shampoo and soap that probably contains phthalates and sulfides, proven to cause anxiety and ADD. You put on your dry clean shirt that's probably loaded with some harmful chemicals, or you use dryer sheets that are chemical, or, or, or probably flame retardant coveralls if you work in a plant. And then you, kitchen, uh, you clean your kitchen counter with chemicals, and then you spray air freshener before you leave, which is pure chemicals. So listen, that's before you ever leave your house in the morning. <laughs> We're our, yeah. Aren't so, you just a honking party? Well, well, here's the thing. People don't realize what I mean whenever I talk. They go, well, let's see, chemicals, yeah, that might be like the exterminator. Mm-hmm. No, these chemicals are in everything. You know, They're really surrounding us. And so that's before you ever leave your house in the morning. And the reason that I go through that is because when I say that we're ingesting chemicals, people kind of glass over and don't get it. And I just want you to really understand what I mean when I say that there are chemicals in the things that we touch and we pay attention to. So I'm going to show you some simple solutions to try to do to reduce this. But none of these by themselves are harmless. I mean, are harmful. So if you take one of these by themselves, it's not going to hurt you any. But when you add all of these chemicals mm-hmm. up, it's a, it's adding up each one of these things. It sort of builds up in our body and it adds up. And I feel that this is the number one cause of today's major health concerns like hormone and thyroid problems, anxiety, mental disturbance and depression, ADD and other children's disorders. These are, this is the reason these things are so prevalent. None of these things were prevalent 50 years ago before we had the, a, a vast um, expansion of the use of these chemicals like we have now. Now, get this. The average American ingests 14 pounds of these chemicals a year. So to give you a visual on that, you know the big box of Tide at the grocery store with the mm-hmm. handle on top? Mm-hmm. That's 14 pounds. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, that's 12 pounds. Mm-hmm. So you have to add two pounds to that and take a spoon and eat that every year. Mm. That's how many chemicals we are ingesting. Now, what if I told you those chemicals are proven to cause thyroid, hormone, obesity, diabetes, ADD, depression, anxiety? And look at the conditions that all the people around us have. Yeah, but we can't live in a cave. No, you can't. So I'm going to show you some solutions for them. Good. I'm going to give you some real common sense solutions. But almost everything that we touch are loaded with these things. And Have you invested recently in bubbles? <laughs> and so, you know, you sp- <laughs> the and plastic in the bubble will probably I know, kill right. I know. And so, you know, it kind of seems like that. I mean, I don't want people to just throw their hands up and say, oh, well, there's just, uh, you know, we're just going to have to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not really about that. It's just we about probably tr- can't cut it out, but we can cut it down. Can't yeah. We? Let's try to cut out 50 percent of these things, because, listen, I mean, if you you know, if you want to try to avoid thyroid problems and cancer and ADD and these things, this is what's causing it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I just don't want people to feel that way where they go, oh, well, I just have to live in a bubble no you, you you can reduce these things there are things you can do to try to make these things less in your life and so after the break i'm going to give you some solutions to try to cut down some of these chemicals we can't avoid them it's just not possible but there are things we can do to try to reduce them by 50 percent in our environment and that's enough to make a difference all right so after the break we'll go through them okay 